program. And Mayor Dean reaches out for ideas on improving Metro schools. Tonight on Channel 4 News at 6, working for you. Got a story that's pushing your hot button? Go to WSMP.com and tell us about it. On the broadcast tonight, making the case after days of attacks, the president takes on the critics to take back the message on health care. Where was the anger? Safety in the skies. Two air traffic controllers are suspended after their mid-air collision, and safety officials are arguing over what's got to change. A second chance. Michael Vick, after serving time, is back in the game. Can he turn things around? A final farewell to Eunice Kennedy Shriver and moving words from her daughter Maria and unlocking a secret of sleep. Nightly news begins now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening, I'm Ann Curry and for Brian Williams tonight. The president was a squarely take on the anger we've seen in recent weeks over health care reform flying to a town hall in a conservative part of Montana. The audience, we were told, was not pre-screened, but the meeting was more like a campaign rally than a debate over health care. The president even getting a standing ovation. We have this story covered tonight, beginning with the chief White House correspondent, Chuck Todd, now joining us from Belgrade, Montana. Chuck. Good evening, Ann. Well, the president just finished up the first of what are going to be back-to-back -back town hall meetings here out west. Colorado happens tomorrow. All of this part of an opportunity to try to regain the political momentum in his push for health care reform. President Obama came to the hills of Montana with his entire family in tow for what was billed as a town hall on health care, but at times felt more like a campaign rally. Hello, Montana! And President Obama was reminiscent of candidate Obama at times as he worked the audience. So I need you to keep knocking on doors, talking to your neighbors, spread the facts. The president did take questions from a mostly supportive audience, but not before offering his own media critique of how town halls have been covered this week. TV loves a ruckus. What you haven't seen on TV, and what makes me proud, are the many constructive meetings going on all over the country. Mindful of Tuesday's relatively tame New Hampshire town hall, the president avoided calling on anyone who could easily be viewed as a supporter. So he found Randy Rathy, who was wearing a National Rifle Association shirt. And we keep getting the bull. That's all we get is bull. Uh, you can't tell us how you're going to pay for this. You are absolutely right that I can't cover another 46 million people for free. The president went on to reiterate his pledge not to raise taxes on families making $250,000 or less, but also said the wealthy would have to pay more. That's what I said. But I said that for people like myself who make more than that, there's nothing wrong with me paying a little bit more in order to help people who got a little bit less. After the town hall, Rathy, a McCain voter who drove 300 miles across the state to be here, said he wasn't convinced the president could fulfill his promise. Uh, I want to tell him and uh, Max Baucus and those people to say, here's where the money is. And I'm afraid where it's coming from is out of us taxpayers' pockets again. Today's town hall was held in an airplane hangar, easily secured from the public. And while the requisite protesters were gathered about a half mile away, the demonstration never got out of hand. Back at the town hall, Mr. Obama was also challenged by a man who sells individual health insurance. Why is it that you've changed your strategy from talking about health care reform to health insurance reform and decided to vilify the insurance companies? Okay, that's a, that's a fair question. My intent is not to vilify insurance companies, right? What I've said is let's work with the existing system. All right, tomorrow, Ann, at another town hall in Grand Junction, Colorado, a conservative part of that state, but the tickets were handed out a little bit differently there. We'll see what kind of reception he gets. Ann? All right, Chuck Todd tonight. Chuck, thanks for reporting. Now with perspective on today's town hall, we are joined by David Gregory, the moderator of NBC's Meet the Press. David, given the events of today, how important will it be for the president to continue to hold these town halls on health care reforms to counteract the negative publicity of recent weeks? Well, vitally important in this respect, Dan, and that is that the president wants to regain control of the debate. You heard what he said during Chuck's reporting. 
that in his estimation, cable TV, TV in general, likes the ruckus, just likes the conflict, and is overlooking some of the more constructive engagement, constructive debate going on around the country. The president wants to separate what he would call extremism from the core of the debate, regain control, reassure Americans about what he is trying to do, and keep health care reform on track. Think of the geography as well. He's out in a part of the country with more conservative, moderate Democrats and independent voters. He wants to keep them on board so he has Democrats supporting him in case he can't get bipartisan reform passed. At the same time, David, at today's rally, there were notably fewer seniors who've been very vocal in their concerns about reform. So does the president have to reassure seniors for his agenda to succeed? It's an important part of it. Yeah, you saw a single mother in the crowd today. You saw uh, younger working people. Seniors are mobilized. They vote. They get in touch with their members of Congress. Uh, they can have a lasting impact here, a determinative impact, really, in terms of whether this can succeed. It happened in 93. It happened with President Bush's Social Security reform. So the ability of the president to say to those older Americans who have Medicare that their care will not be impacted and that they're not going to have to pay more becomes very important. That's if he can make good on that pledge. All right, NBC's David Gregory of NBC's Meet the Press. Thank you so much tonight. Now to the latest on that mid-air collision above the Hudson River. Two air traffic controllers have now been suspended for their behavior last Saturday, the day of the disaster that killed a total of nine people. The NTSB says one of the controllers was on a non-business phone call at the time, and a supervisor who was supposed to be there had left to run an errand. NBC's Tom Costello has more tonight on this story from Washington. Hey, Tom, good evening. And it's not at all clear that these particular controllers' actions in any way contributed to this crash. This was happening as the plane was being handed over from a small airport, a regional airport called Teterboro, over to Newark Airport. That pilot may have missed some critical messages about air traffic, but the FAA and the NTSB both say the controllers' actions are very disturbing. The NTSB tells NBC News the Teterboro controller handling air traffic Saturday morning made a non-business related phone call after clearing the pilot of the small plane for departure. The NTSB says the Teterboro controller told the pilot to contact Newark Airport but failed to advise him of air traffic in the area. A Newark controller did see the traffic but had not heard from the plane yet. So Newark asked Teterboro's controller still on the phone to steer the pilot away. Teterboro tried to radio the pilot twice, but got no response. The pilot never contacted Newark and never responded to Teterboro. Seconds later, this horrific crash caught on home video. In a statement, the FAA said, we have no reason to believe at this time that these controllers' actions contributed to the accident. But today, the new NTSB chief had a sharp response. It is too early to, to speculate whether or not ATC was uh, causal in this accident, and uh, it's inappropriate for others to do so. The FAA. Yes. Veteran air traffic controllers insist multitasking is part of the job. Air traffic controllers can never have a bad day. A bad day as an air traffic controller could result in the, in the loss of, uh, you know, hundreds of lives. While the FAA and NTSB face off, questions persist about whether the Hudson River airspace is too complicated and too dangerous without air traffic control below 1,100 feet. In the airspace today, pilots were warning each other of their locations. Who's coming up on Chelsea Northbound? Yeah, Chelsea Northbound traffic 600, but I'm uh, in the midst of a cross reversal mid river. I'll be southbound again. All right, I've got you coming over top of you now. Today, the Transportation Department announced it's now studying whether more FAA oversight is needed, with recommendations expected within two weeks. This is not your father's Department of Transportation or your mother's Department of Transportation. This is President Obama's Department of Transportation. And again today, the nation's top safety chief called on the FAA to act on some of the 400 aviation safety recommendations the NTSB has submitted. Years and years uh, to get through a recommendation is just simply too long. Uh, if those recommendations are not implemented, then we have uh, risk to lives. Moments ago, I got a phone call from the union representing the controllers at Newark. They are now disputing the NTSB's timeline of events, but, Ann, they do not dispute that that controller was on a personal phone call. 
Back to you. All right, Tom Costello tonight. Tom, thanks. After serving hard time for running a dog fighting ring, NFL quarterback Michael Vick is back in the game. He's getting a second chance, signed to a contract with the Philadelphia Eagles, and he's promising he will not disappoint on or off the field. But already his fresh start is running into some pushback. Our report tonight from NBC's Ron Allen. Michael Vick's appearance today as the newest member of the Philadelphia Eagles met with mixed response, most of it negative. I'm appalled by it. He doesn't deserve to be playing at all. Yeah, what he did was horrible. The local paper warning, hide your dogs, and asking, what are they thinking? A subdued Vic told reporters he was thinking say. about redemption. I made some mistakes. I've done some terrible things, made a horrible mistake, and now I want to be part of the solution and not the problem. Vic has just finished serving 18 months in federal prison for bankrolling a dog fighting ring that many animals did not survive. Sack Michael Vick! His crime sparked angry protests. Sack Michael Vick! The NFL suspended him indefinitely, a humiliating fall for a star quarterback who was once the league's highest paid player. I committed you know, an act that was cruel and it was unethical. Uh, it was, you know, it was inhumane and, and, and uh, you know, so I understand to a certain degree, but, you know, our country is a country of second chances and, um, you know, I paid my debt to society. But today, some of Vic's most vocal critics are not buying it. I don't think he should have been signed. I think remorse is a process. It's not just words. You come out, you served your time, you go into the community and you show with deeds that you are truly sorry. Michael Vick has a million-dollar contract, but he is still not yet allowed to play in official games. The NFL commissioner will decide when he can take the field with the Eagles several weeks from now, after the regular season begins. Meanwhile, football fans have strong feelings on both sides. He's not the monster that everybody makes him out to be. Just didn't like the idea of him being on the team. From the Eagles' perspective, the risk-reward here is a little curious. I mean, even if he helps them, Ultimately, you're going to have to answer a lot of Michael Vick questions for the rest of the year, and that's going to be a distraction. Vick was an elusive player on the field. His biggest challenge now, to outrun his critics and redefine his image. Ron Allen, NBC News, Philadelphia. A big bank failure to report tonight. Colonial Bank Group, based in Montgomery, Alabama, is being put into receivership by the FDIC. Its deposits and branches will be taken over by North Carolina-based BB&T. Colonial had $25 billion in assets, making it the fifth largest bank failure in U.S. history. It is expected to cost the FDIC's insurance fund $2.8 billion. And the Labor Department said today that consumer prices are falling this year at the fastest pace in 59 years. The consumer price index was down 2.1 percent in July from a year ago, the sharpest 12-month drop since 1950. On Wall Street today, stocks lost ground but closed well off the lows of the day, the Dow finishing down just under 77 points. When Nightly News continues on this Friday evening, our scientists getting closer to unlocking the secret of how much sleep we actually need. And later, making a difference, a team effort to help young people facing an uphill battle to get an education. There are side mirrors, and then there are the indicator light warning, radar sensor linking, blind spot penetrating side mirrors of the all-new Ford Taurus. So what doesn't show up in your mirror can still show up on your mirror. We speak car. We speak innovation. Introducing the all-new Taurus from Ford. Drive one. Bicycle, I've missed you. Gathering dust as pollen floats through the air. But with the strength of Zyrtec, the fastest 24-hour allergy relief, I promise not to wait as long to go for our ride. With Zyrtec, I can love the air. Discover new seafood creations inspired from around the country. From the Northeast, try our new garlic roasted Maine lobster and crab bake. Or from the South, try our New Orleans wood grilled shrimp jambalaya. And soon at Red Lobster. When morning comes in the middle of the night, it affects your entire day. To get a good night's sleep, 
tried two-layer Ambien CR. The first layer dissolves quickly to help you fall asleep. And unlike other sleep aids, a second dissolves slowly to help you stay asleep. When taking Ambien CR, don't drive or operate machinery. Sleepwalking and eating or driving while not fully awake with memory loss for the event, as well as abnormal behaviors such as being more outgoing or aggressive than normal, confusion, agitation, and hallucinations may occur. Don't take it with alcohol as it may increase these behaviors. Allergic reactions such as shortness of breath, swelling of your tongue or throat may occur and in rare cases may be fatal. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. In patients with depression, worsening of depression including risk of suicide may occur. If you experience any of these behaviors or reactions, contact your doctor immediately. Wake up ready for your day. Ask your health care provider for two-layer Ambien CR. A woman becomes a police informant and ends up dead. But where were the police when the bust went bad? Dateline tonight, 9, 8 central on NBC. Tuesday, a Today exclusive. The first survivor, Richard Hatch. His first interview after surviving prison. Only on NBC. Lynette Squeaky from the Charles Manson follower who tried to assassinate President Gerald Ford was released today from a federal prison in Fort Worth, Texas. Fromm pointed a 45 caliber handgun at President Ford as he shook hands in a crowd during a 1975 visit to California. She later said she didn't really want to kill him. She was granted parole after 34 years in prison based on good conduct. Today, California officials declared a state of emergency in Santa Cruz County as a wildfire that has forced more than 2,000 people from their homes continues to burn out of control. About four and a half square miles have been scorched in this fire, just one of several burning in both Southern and Northern California. We've all heard about those lucky people who seem to be able to get by just fine on very little sleep, sometimes just a few hours a night. Well, now a new study may explain why and is being called a breakthrough. Our chief science correspondent, Robert Pazell, now joins us with more on this. Bob? Good evening, Anne. Scientists have always known that different people require different amounts of sleep, and they've assumed that a big reason is genetics. Now, in a mother-daughter combination, researchers found a gene, apparently carried by 3% of the population, that allows people to get by on six hours of sleep instead of the recommended eight. There have been other genes associated with sleep that cause insomnia and affect the biological clock. The hope is by studying those genes, the scientists will learn more about sleep itself because even though we all sleep, it is one of the least understood biological phenomena. Unfortunately, for the foreseeable future, there's no way to get the effects of that six-hour gene, even though a lot of people would like it, and I would imagine especially you, when you have to get up for the Today Show and still do nightly news. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, hopefully that day will come someday. Bob Bazell, thank you so much. And when we come back, the tributes today for one of the last members of an American political dynasty, the Kennedys. There are few guarantees in life. Here's one for your skin that's clinically proven. Olay Professional Pro-X Wrinkle Protocol is as effective as the leading wrinkle prescription brand at reducing the look of wrinkles. That's because Olay has teamed with a highly specialized group of dermatologists and created a wrinkle protocol that gives you the results of the leading wrinkle prescription brand without a prescription. Olay Professional Pro-X. This is a guarantee you're guaranteed to love. Things that matter to me are worth covering, and covering well. So when I'm insuring my car, I'm really covering so much more. With coverage that's smart when I buy it, and smarter when I need it. Join the thousands of us getting better auto coverage at a better price under the Traveler's umbrella. Get better coverage with Travelers and save an average of $383. To find an agent near you or to get a quote, visit Travelers.com or call 1-800-MY-COVERAGE. Right. Now playing with the kids? Not on these legs. Poor leg circulation. Doctor says it's PAD. Peripheral artery disease? Mm. More than doubles your risk for a heart attack or stroke. That's all I hear. Better ask your doctor about Plavix. Plavix can help protect you from a heart attack or stroke. Plavix helps keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. The cause of most heart attacks and strokes. My cousin, the MD. Call your doctor about Plavix. If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you should not use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some other medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase. So tell your doctor before planning surgery. 
And always talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix, especially if you've had a stroke. If you develop fever, unexplained weakness, or confusion, tell your doctor promptly, as these may be signs of a rare but potentially life-threatening condition called DTP, which has been reported rarely, sometimes in less than two weeks after starting therapy. Other rare but serious side effects may occur. With rheumatoid arthritis, it seems like my life is split in two. There's the life I live. And the life I want to live. Fortunately, there's Embrel. Embrel can help relieve pain, stiffness, fatigue, and stop joint damage. Because Embrel suppresses your immune system, it may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and nervous system and blood disorders have occurred. Before starting Embrel, your doctor should test you for tuberculosis. Also, ask your doctor if you live in an area with a greater risk for certain fungal infections. Don't start Embrel if you have an infection like the flu. Tell your doctor if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if, while on Embrel, you experience persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Ask your rheumatologist if Embrel is right for you and help bridge the gap between the life you live and the life you want to live. Sunday, healthcare, leading voices in the national debate. Army, Maddow, Dashiell, Coburn. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nightly News at nightly.msnbc.com. Back now with today's final goodbye to Eunice Kennedy Shriver, the founder of the Special Olympics and sister to the late President Kennedy. Family, friends, and so many people whose lives were changed gathered in Cape Cod to pay tribute. Again tonight, NBC's Andrea Mitchell joins us with more on this emotional gathering. Andrea. Good evening, Anne. Eunice Kennedy Shriver reached the finish line in her own Olympics today at the small church where her daughter was married and her brothers, Jack, Bobby, and Ted, were once altar boys. They came from near and far to the Kennedy Family Church in Hyannis to celebrate the life of Eunice Kennedy Shriver. The famous and the not very famous, celebrities, and the special needs people she championed. I'll never forget the day that I was sickened in the hospital. A call came. And it was Eunice saying to me, how do you feel? <laughs> and I knew I had a friend through sorrow, through pain. She was a fearless warrior for the voiceless and the ultimate role model for her children. To them, she was mommy, devoted to family and faith, but hardly conventional. Most of the mothers were dressed up and kind of neatly coiffed. Um, Mommy wore men's pants, she smoked Cuban cigars, and she played tackle football. <laughs> she found time to be a best friend to all her children and 19 grandchildren. Grandma, thank you for watching Mermaids with me, having magical tea parties, our many competitive sailing adventures. For the young and the old people who have yet to discover their passion in life, may Grandma's example of courage, faith, and commitment guide them to find their calling. Unable to join his family today, brother Ted Kennedy. Until Eunice's final weeks, he visited her every day. Just he and Eunice having a late afternoon drink out on the patio overlooking Nantucket Sound in a home and an area that is filled with so many memories for the both of them. I think if I said to my mother, which I often did, I can't go on without you. I don't know how to live without you. She'd say, you're fine. I've raised you well. Now get out there. I don't want to hear one more yip. Get going. Your brothers will be nice to you. <laughs> Saying his last farewell after 56 years of marriage, husband Sarge Schreiber, now living with Alzheimer's. And in a private ceremony after that public funeral, uh, Eunice Schreiber was buried here in Hyannis, surrounded by her family and the special Olympians whom she loved. Uh, Bono sent a trio of Irish musicians to play Bob Dylan's Forever Young. And All right, Andrew, thank you so much. And by the way, for you, thank you also for your grace in handling the, some of the dangers of live television, as you heard at the top there, that we apologize for. And when we come back, making a difference for young people through the love of a game. What's your Cialis moment? When she gives me that look. 
When at last we're alone. When we, when we both, both decide. decide. <laughs> Today, guys with erectile dysfunction can be ready with another dosing option from Cialis. Cialis for daily use is a clinically proven low-dose tablet you take every day. So you can be ready anytime the moment is right. So relax and take your time. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injuries, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Today, you have options. Cialis for daily use or 36-hour Cialis. Ask your doctor if Cialis is right for you, so when the moment is right, you can be ready. When people say, hey, Mike, why Ford? Why now? I say, brace yourself. That gas guzzler in your driveway just might be a clunker. But don't panic. It could be a good thing. Your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers are cash for clunkers specialists. They'll recycle your ride and get you a big, fat, juicy rebate from Uncle Sam. You can get all the details, charts, graphs, etc. at Ford.com. Why Ford? Why now? Why not? Visit your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer. I'm thinking now would be a great time. I don't always let my bladder problems or the worry my pipes might leak compromise what I like to do. Like hunting for bargains, not always bathrooms. I take care with Vesicare. Once daily, Vesicare can help control your bladder muscle and is proven to reduce frequent sudden urges and leaks day and night. If you have certain stomach or glaucoma problems or trouble emptying your bladder, do not take Vesicare. Tell your doctor right away if you have a serious allergic reaction, severe abdominal pain, or become constipated for three or more days. Vesicare may cause blurred vision, so take care while driving or doing unsafe tasks. Common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, and indigestion. You deserve better than to always be compromised by urges and leaks. Ask your doctor today about taking care with Vesicare. Coming up on Channel 4, see how scammers are trying to cash in on the Cash for Clunkers program. And Mayor Dean reaches out for ideas on improving metro schools. Tonight on Channel 4 News at 6, working for you. Got a story that's pushing your hot button? Go to WSMV.com and tell us about it. Making a Difference, brought to you by Vesicare. Time now for our Making a Difference report, and tonight a community with a proud heritage and a rich history in this country. Despite their great legacy, Negative Americans face some serious obstacles, including high unemployment and lack of higher education. But in the middle of the country, one man is trying to make a difference for the next generation. NBC's Miguel Amaguer has more on our story from Dewar, Oklahoma. Good. Bad luck, here. For these teenagers, baseball is more than just a game. It's for love of the game. A program that gives Native American students a swinging chance at college through sports and academic mentorship. Good job, man. Good job. Lucas Taylor, a Muscogee Indian, founded for love of the game five years ago. He's helped hundreds in his tribe break into higher education. His sports tournaments bring together Native Americans from across the country and they see what the country has to offer. Never thought I'd be in New York. See Niagara Falls, do something I had never done before. Can't see, Dave. For the players, the trips are free, but the exposure to new life experiences is priceless. Many of the students in the program come from humble beginnings, homes without running water or even electricity, small cities scattered across Oklahoma. We have to have a hook to get our kids in, and the hook is sports. Hey! <laughs> Once we get them there, we teach them these life skills, talk to them about education. The numbers are sobering. Statistics show only 10% of Native Americans even go to college. And of that 10%, only about half graduate. Alina Harley beat those odds. A star softball player, she's the only one in her family to go to college. And when her father died and her mother was sent to prison, she was left to raise her younger sister alone. I see that they believe in me and it's, it's definitely making me more determined and making me want to succeed at everything I do. This is a platform that we can use 
a springboard to the rest of our lives. You guys for Lucas Taylor and for love of the game, it's about more than just giving back. Atta kid, atta boy. It's a team effort to help Native Americans move forward. Yeah. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Dewar, Oklahoma. And that's our broadcast for this Friday evening. Lester Holt will be here this weekend. I'm Ann Curry, and for Brian Williams, and for all of us here at NBC News, thank you, and good night. Working for you in high definition, this is Channel 4 News. Good evening and welcome to Channel 4 News at 6. There's a story playing out tonight at Vanderbilt Hospital that has faith and medicine at odds. A young man who just graduated high school and was supposed to head off to college tomorrow is the focus of hundreds of prayers. Doctors have all but given up hope, but his church family, where his own father is pastor, believes a miracle can happen. Channel 4's Deanna Lambert joins us now with this story. Well, Josiah Berger is on life support at Vanderbilt tonight. And although doctors gave him a pessimistic report yesterday, his family and hundreds of others who know him aren't giving up hope that God can still work a miracle. He was always the life of everything. Like, he was so much fun to be around. He was always positive. He never had a negative word to say about anyone. Just